coming. You know, I was like to take this opportunity to talk about myself. The man of the hour. And let me tell you something, Daddy. When you're the man, you make history every time you step foot in this ring. And that's the bottom line. Wrestling podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 78 of the Top Sweet Wrestling Podcast. Yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver preview show. We only have two to three topics. And we have three topics we're going to get into, but it will be all SummerSlam, all TakeOver. We're going to break it all down. Feel free to find me, link tr.ee slash two sweet pod there you can find all my listings of where i put this podcast on all of the platforms so we're gonna get into this thing no best thing funniest thing this week no number one spot this week i don't want to hold you too long we got two uh, shows to break down and we only have a few news topics to get into so first up the biggest one of the day NXT ladies and gentlemen it was speculated for quite some time about the FS1 move the Fox Sports 1 move for NXT but this came from Dave Wilson the Wrestling Observer Newsletter he said that the current plan tentative plan is to have NXT on Fox Sports 1 Wednesday night from 8 to 10 p.m. two hours not one not the normal one hour show that we're used to but two hours very interesting uh he also said that things are far enough along that fox has already informed affiliates so this is looking like a thing ladies and gentlemen so here it is the things that i take away from that is live tv now when all this was being speculated by nxt to fs1 we thought okay just the same old tape nxt uh, so I mean it's not even a decision we're gonna watch AEW or at least I said I was gonna watch AEW I can't speak for everybody so this is very interesting having it live is a stroke of genius I gotta hand it to Triple H WWE I uh, Vince is involved gotta hand it to Vince putting NXT live if this happens this is just a reported just this is just a report excuse me we'll see if it actually goes down but if it goes live it is a stroke of genius. It makes you think, okay, maybe I have to look at NXT. Uh, putting it to two hours, I got to say that I am, look, it's, it's, uh, it is a catch-22. Because if you put it two hours, sure, that goes up uh, head-to-head with AEW. I'm assuming it says Wednesday nights at 8 to 10 p.m. We'll see if that lines up with uh if that is Eastern or Central time zone, and we'll see if that lines up with AEW. But if they line up with AEW, sure, you you give two hours to NXT, and that's a good thing. But I am worried that that would water down the product. Uh, What I love about NXT is that everybody is not on the show every single week. So it leaves you wanting more. It has a Lucha Underground effect, if you've ever watched that. Lucha Underground was only one hour. So you had action pack, an action packed hour, and you'd be looking forward to next week. I'd be saying it, man. I didn't get a chance to see the Undisputed Era this week, so maybe next week they'll be on. I'm excited to see them this week. Two hours, eh, it probably becomes watered down. Hopefully not. You know, I'm not worried about the product. Obviously, we'll still continue to get great action, but I'm very worried that it'll get watered down. Uh, the report from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, let her excuse me, also stated that WWE officials believe that they have the edge in terms of roster as they can have main roster talent come in to make appearances when they want. I don't know if it's that big of de- that big of a deal to have main roster talent come in. It is a big deal, but I don't know if it's a thing to where you look at it and you say, "Oh, this is gonna turn the tide uh, to get people to watch AEW, uh, to get people to watch NXT instead of AEW." We'll see on that front. But looking at it overall, as it stands right now. I like if NXT is going to go to FS1 and and they're going to go there, you might as well go all out. Like, not to steal a phrase from AEW, but you might as well go all the way if you're going to do it. So, I appreciate what's going on in this report. If it goes down, I'll appreciate it for NXT. Uh, Hopefully, 
this uh, makes NXT its own brand and not just a brand that's just holding guys there until they get called up. I would love that for NXT. And we'll see as it goes forward. You know, I will be watching AEW to start off, but I'm very interested to see what NXT pulls off. So next up, I saw quite the interesting report, man. And not necessarily one that I was excited about. And it reads, WWE is interested in purchasing Fight TV. Uh, from Dave Mustard Wrestling Observer Newsletter, it said that WWE's interest is sincere enough that there are upcoming meetings about the possibility. Transcript comes from 411 Mania, by the way. Uh, it says that Fight currently functions as, uh, of course, they currently sh are function as the streaming home, MMA, boxing, wrestling companies, and AEW as well. I'm going to get into that. And he just said that they just announced on Thursday that they are partnering with MLW as well. So, I mean, here it is, man. I do not like it one bit because if I felt like WWE was going to do something positive with Fight, then okay, I'm with it. But WWE is all about killing competition. I have been saying it for years. Like, here it is. We got all of these wrestling companies. I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. We got all these wrestling companies. Uh, Impact Wrestling has hosted pay-per-views on Fight. All these wrestling companies, MOW is in on it now. And, like, I am here to say that WWE is just here to kill those guys. And just, like, kill Fight TV. Not necessarily, I don't want to say kill Fight TV, but they are here to stop your Impact Wrestlings and mainly your AEWs from airing on Fight TV. So, I don't like it. We'll see how it turns out. It is, in my estimation, the AEW effect because WWE hasn't shown interest reportedly. Now, this is just a report. They haven't shown interest uh, before in, in purchasing Fight TV. Obviously, it could be good business for Fight TV, so I don't hate them for it one way or another. But I really hope that it does not go down. That is just my hope because, uh, look, WWE is just here to kill off these wrestling companies opportunity mainly AEW and speaking of AEW last news topic before we get into the breakdowns uh, Cody Rhodes has some interesting things to say uh, on Busted Open Radio talked about the casual fan and I'm going to get into two things he said uh, this was his quote transcript from 401 Man here by the way he said well I mean one thing you guys use the term so much as you talk about wrestling I uh, talked about the casual fan and he said the term casual fan i just want to honestly throw up in my mouth said because it's this uh vernacular that to describe wrestling that it's based that is based on the monday night wars when the monday night wars are over they're not a thing as far as they're not happening here and now in the present he cannot be any more wrong about that look man the casual fan exists I would say to Cody, why do you think that WWE's ratings go up uh, substantially when they have these Raw reunions? Because the casual fan sees, okay, Steve Austin's going to be there. Oh, DX is probably going to be there. Oh, let me watch. That is the casual fan. The casual fan totally exists. And I don't know what world Cody lives in to where he doesn't think that the casual fan exists and that they have to draw in. And when I say they, I mean AEW. They have to draw in the casual fan because there are enough casual fans out there that will see a new wrestling company and be like, okay, Chris Jericho's there. Oh, uh, hey, let me watch this. Oh, they, they're gonna run on TNT just like WCW did. Let me watch. So the casual fan is out there to be had. And I would hope that he doesn't just ignore the casual fan like, okay, we don't need them. Like, I hope he appeals to them because the casual fans, like, it has to be a buffet, much like Eric Bischoff told Cody Rhodes. They have to appeal to everyone. So, the casual fan definitely exists uh, for AEW. He said something else that I totally agree with, however. He said, so my focus is always the base that built AEW. And that base, if you've seen it, you get it. And if you haven't seen it, it's just something that you have to see and feel. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. If you want to build to the base that built up AEW, that is a tremendous idea. ECW kept building to their base. And if they would have had a billionaire backing them, I think ECW would have won. 
the Monday Night Wars. That's just my opinion. That has been my opinion for years. But I, I think a Cody is right, and they have to build to their base. But I think he ha you should not ignore the casual fan because the casual fan is a huge thing. I wish all the success in the world for AEW, and I'm interested to see how it turns out. I just hope that AEW maintains base to where look, it can't you can't go all out on promoting to us hardcore wrestling fans like you have to have something to draw in the casual fans as well and i think they do have a product that can draw in casual fans as well as us hardcore wrestling fans we'll see how it turns out going forward so ladies and gentlemen we're gonna get into the SummerSlam uh, breakdown here and Look, this is quite the interesting card, man. There's a lot of things. Like, it doesn't feel like SummerSlam. There's normally, when SummerSlam rolls around, there's normally a lot of things that I'm very interested in. There aren't a lot of things, a lot of matches that I'm very interested in. There's some matches that I'm interested in. So that's why, to me, it doesn't feel like SummerSlam. The build hasn't been great in my estimation overall for WWE. But... That doesn't mean that we can't get a great slate of matches. Hopefully, they have a great pay-per-view. I'm going to start with Roman Reigns, ladies and gentlemen. Not listed as a match or not listed, listed as a participant for SummerSlam, but he's in quite arguably the biggest storyline going right now. Uh, we had the situation on SmackDown. Somebody tried to run him over with cranes, and we got to Raw. And we had someone run over Roman Reigns in his SUV and that caught everyone's attention. That was a major rebound on Monday Night Raw from the comedy, the unintentional comedy that was the original Reigns fall on Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns just getting up and walking away. They did a fantastic job on Monday Night Raw of hooking me in and on Tuesday, Roman Reigns walks up to Buddy Murphy and he just punks poor Buddy Murphy out. Like, the, that is not the opportune way to introduce Buddy Murphy. And I hated that. But here it is. It is what it is. And Buddy Murphy snitched out Eric. I mean, I snitched out Roman. Excuse me. Snitched out Rowan. Excuse me. What am I on today? But here it is. We stand. I don't like the reveal of Rowan. Like, uh, really? Like, here it is, Rowan is the mastermind, and everybody's assuming, okay, it's going to be Daniel Bryan, he's the guy behind it all, and we'll see if that's the case, but as it pertains to SummerSlam, here's my theory, we don't need to have this angle stop here, like, they haven't built this angle up enough for me for it to just stop at SummerSlam and we move on to something else, like, Roman Reigns has to be on the card so if you want to have an interaction with Rowan and Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns or with Rowan and Roman Reigns that is just fine if you want to have Roman Reigns come out and I beat down Rowan they get into it and Rowan uh, Roman hits him with the Superman punch it is so impossibly hard to talk about Roman and Rowan without <laughs> screwing up like that so excuse me today want to have him come out to superman punch rowan i'm fine with that but let the angle go on like we need to continue to build this up so moving on into the matches on SummerSlam, we got brock lesnar versus seth rollins and you want to talk about an angle that i'm totally not interested in this is one seth rollins what was that speech on monday night raw like they tried to drum up some sympathy for the guy and it did not go over we had what chance in the middle of his heartfelt speech like no one wants to feel sympathy for seth rollins we want to see the guy that was burning things down that was tearing down the house angry seth rollins that's the guy i want to see fierce seth rollins the guy not scared of brock lesnar that's the guy i want to see out of all of this and here it is. We got Brock Lesnar versus Seth, Seth Rollins. And I'm just not interested in this match whatsoever. Hopefully, they put together a good match. They could if they wanted to. Uh, if we don't have the 
classic Brock Lesnar suplex, suplex, suplex match, walk around and growl match, they could put on a fantastic matchup. But as it stands for your victor, I really believe that Seth Rollins cannot win this match. We've had Brock Lesnar punk him out and beat him down uh, two weeks in a row. And you mean to tell me that Seth Rollins is going to bounce back from all of those beatdowns, all of those injuries and win the match? Like, no, I'm not feeling that. Brock Lesnar will be your victor here and we will see the Universal Championship go away for however long Brock Lesnar wants it to. So moving on, we got Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton. I've enjoyed this build for the most part. I would have liked to see them go head to head on the last edition of SmackDown before SummerSlam. But it is what it is. I've enjoyed the realism that they've brought into this field. Uh, we brought up the stupid, stupid, stupid Kofi incident with Randy Orton. Brought up uh, Randy Orton holding down Kofi Kingston when he should have been world champion. So I've enjoyed this build. It should be a fantastic matchup. Randy Orton always looks good when he has a competitor that can make him look good in the matchup. So this should be a phenomenal matchup. A sneaky candidate for match of the night. At the end of the day, Kofi Kingston will pick up the victory here. I do not expect this title reign to end at SummerSlam. Moving on, we got the Raw Women's Championship on the line. Becky Lynch versus Natalya in a submission match. I gotta say that I am not excited about Becky Lynch versus Natalya because I've been saying for quite some time now, I have not been excited about the way they've treated Natalya before this matchup. Natalya was back in catering. For the most part so it's hard for me to get up for her as a competitor for the raw women's championship now they've tried their best to drum up some interest into the storyline and i give those two ladies credit because they've done a decent job at the end of the day who wins the match natalia is in toronto so it stands to reason that she would get the victory in front of the hometown fans uh, at the end of the day, I don't think it's time to take the championship off of Becky Lynch yet. She will get the victory with the disarmor. She will win here. Moving on, we got the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. Bayley versus Ember Moon. When this match got made, I was super, super, super excited. I, I, look, man, this was something that you had all those talented ladies on SmackDown. They were getting held down in the back. And once Ember Moon got her chance, I was for this all the way. I haven't enjoyed the build since then. Look, we've gone back and forth with Bailey and Ember Moon in tag matches. Uh, we had one taking the other out. And I can enjoy that to a certain extent. But it hasn't really built up any excitement. I think the apex of the build of this field was when they made the match. But nonetheless, I am excited for this match. And we will see how it all turns out going forward. I think that I would love for Ember Moon to win this matchup. But I don't think they're going to go with Ember Moon. I don't think WWE is as into Ember Moon as we are. So Bayley will pick up the victory here. I don't have a problem with Bayley winning because she just won the SmackDown Women's Championship. But it would be a phenomenal thing if Ember Moon won and they kept this storyline going. Next up, we have Charlotte Flair versus Trish Stratus. Ah, uh, look, this feud kind of came out of nowhere. We've only had two weeks to build the feud up, and I thought these ladies did a fantastic job of doing so. We got the great old school versus new school, our uh, old era versus new era storyline that we have going here. And uh, Trish slapped the crap out of Charlotte Flair on the most recent episode of SmackDown. I enjoyed that. So at the end of the day, Charlotte Flair has to win this match. There's no good reason for Trish Stratus to win here. The Queen will pick up the victory here in what should be a phenomenal matchup. Trish Stratus looked good the last time she was in the ring or actually wrestled in the match. Next up, we have the United States Championship on the line. AJ Styles versus Ricochet. This has been a phenomenal feud as far as match quality goes. I think it has reached a standstill at the moment as in terms of interest as far as the view because we've had quite uh, a lot of matches in a, in a short amount of time as pertains to AJ Styles for 
uh, versus Ricochet, excuse me. So I'm excited about the match, not so much about the build. At the end of the day, Ricochet will pick up the United States title. I think he lost the United States title to AJ Styles because AJ Styles couldn't lose his first match. Ah, uh, back with the club. So Ricochet will pick up the victory here, and who knows, the feud may go on. Next up is Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon. And we'll see how this turns out. But this, we have the stipulation if Owens loses, he will quit WWE. I'm not very much into that stipulation. But I've enjoyed this Kevin Owens run as Stone Cold Kevin Owens. I think he's done a phenomenal job. And this is the time for Shane McMahon to lose. Shane McMahon will lose this match. So Kevin Owens will pick up a much needed victory over Shane McMahon and hopefully that can be the end of Shane McMahon because I'm tired of seeing him every week man I'm sick of it moving on we have The Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor they have done a phenomenal job with this guy and I've enjoyed every bit of Bray Wyatt and I'm looking forward to his debut. How is he going to wrestle? Is he going to wrestle with the mask? Is he going to wrestle without the mask? I am so into this guy. I want to see what's going to happen. And I'm so excited to see how it turns out. It should be a phenomenal match. He's in there with Finn Balor. Who can make anybody look good. And it is going to be a great matchup that Bray Wyatt will pick up the win in. He cannot afford to lose this match at all. Finn Balor can't afford to lose this match because he's taking a break. Bray Wyatt picks up the victory here. Next up, we have Goldberg versus Dolph Ziggler. And I got to say that this one caught me off guard by surprise. Uh, if Because I don't read the spoilers. Obviously, I know now that the spoilers were out there. Goldberg takes the Miz's spot here. And I got to say that Goldberg deserves a, a chance at redemption, man. There are people that don't like this match. I kind of like it. It's a catch-22. Obviously, Dolph Ziggler will get the loss, but Goldberg deserves a shot at redemption after that bad match with The Undertaker, and Dolph Ziggler will make him look good here. I will see if it's an extended match or if it's just the Goldberg special. I spear and jackhammer in two minutes, and it's over. Goldberg will pick up the victory here. Next up and last up, we have the Cruiserweight Championship on the line, Drew Gulak versus Oni Lorcan. Uh, Oni Lorcan earned his place in this match. He won a six pack challenge. And I got to say that this will be a hard hitting match. At the end of the day, I do not see Drew Gulak losing this title. He just won it. So I see him retaining here in what should be a phenomenal matchup. Another sneaky candidate for match of the night i'm very excited for it drew gulak will pick up the victory here moving on to nxt takeover toronto we're gonna break this down and man i cannot wait for this it is tomorrow baby i will be in on this i cannot wait to watch it and this has been the most exciting build in my estimation so i am all in i cannot wait for it and it will be fun i can't wait baby saturday is going down first up we're going to start right at the top just like we did for SummerSlam. two out of three falls match for the nxt championship adam cole versus johnny gorgano first fall is a classic matchup second fall is a street fight and the third fall if needed of course it will be needed will be picked by william regal my guess is that the third fall will be a steel cage match to click to keep the undisputed era out of the ring i think cole picks up the victory in the street fight with the help of the undisputed era william regal makes a cage match steel cage match for the third fall uh, at the end of the day this has been a phenomenal feud i've enjoyed the build for these guys they continue to put on match of the year candidates and I expect no less from this match. A match of the year candidate. It will be going down. Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano. Who picks up the victory here? I think it will be Adam Cole who will pick up the victory. He just won the title. There's no good reason to take the title off of him now and put it back on Johnny Gargano. I think Johnny Gargano goes up to the main roster after this. Moving on. We have the NXT Women's Championship on the line. Shayna Baszler versus Mia Yim. And I've enjoyed this build a lot, man. We've had Mia Yim going backstage and destroying people left and right. The HBIC just tearing people up. And she got in Shayna Baszler's face uh, in the most recent face-off that they have. And I am ready for this match. It is time. 
for that title to come off of Shayna Baszler. And Miriam is the perfect uh, person to pick up the win and to be the NXT Women's Championship. Shayna Baszler, I don't want to say that she's been holding that title hostage, but it has been time for that title to come off her like for months now. Even going all the way back to when she faced off with Bianca Belair for the first time. It was time for her to lose the title then, so it's very much time for her to lose it now. Moving on, Miriam will pick up the victory here. We'll, main, we'll win the NXT Women's Championship. Moving on to the NXT Tag Team Championship match. Street Profits versus Undisputed Era. I haven't enjoyed this build because there's been little build because the Street Profits have been on Monday Night Raw. They had a good back and forth in the ring on the most recent episode of NXT. And I think at the end of the day, I think it is time. If you're going to put the Street Profits on Raw, take the titles off of them. I am going to go with the Undisputed Era to win the titles and they will be dripped in gold at the end of the show i love the street profits but if you're gonna be on monday night raw there is no reason to hold the tag team titles hostage moving on to candace larray versus eo Shirai. look i have enjoyed this build i have enjoyed the heel turn from eo like they completely changed her entrance they completely changed her entrance music to which i can enjoy uh, for that, if you're going to turn somebody, why not go all the way out with them? And they've turned her dark, and I love every bit of it. She's facing off with Candice LeRae. This should be a phenomenal matchup. Every matchup listed here is a match of the night candidate. So, And I expect nothing less from this match. Uh, at the end of the day, Io Shirai will pick up the victory. You can't have her lose her first match back as a heel. You can't, you can't have her lose because she'll lose momentum afterwards. EO picks up the victory here, which would be a awesome match. Moving on to the final matchup of the night. The NXT North American Championship. Velveteen Dream versus Pete Dunne versus Roderick Strong. I gotta say that I would have enjoyed this one more if it were Velveteen Dream versus Pete Dunne. I was shocked when Pete Dunne came out and because I do not read spoilers obviously NXT is taped but I don't read spoilers so I was shocked when Pete Dunne came out and like came up to Velveteen Dream and I was thinking okay man this would be an awesome one-on-one -on -one match but I don't mind the addition of Roderick Strong because he is a phenomenal worker and this will be a phenomenal match a match of the night candidate match of the year candidate i'm gonna already put it on the board for match of the year candidate uh at the end of the day who wins here this one is a tough one man because i could see it going either way but i am going to go with velveteen dream here to pin roger strong and i think we're on the way to a Velveteen Dream versus Pete Dunne face off at whatever the next takeover will be and I cannot wait for that. So that is the NXT breakdown. That is the SummerSlam breakdown. Let me know all of your thoughts whether that's on Twitter at 2 Sweet Pie, or in the YouTube comments or on Periscope. Let me know all of your thoughts. Feel free to follow me there. Let me know all of your wrestling thoughts.